and we are back what is up everyone welcome back to the hacks Matter twitch channel or welcome to my youtube channel my name is tyler and we are going to learn some more aws pen testing attacking and defending on try hack me through their business exclusive feature on called attacking and defending aws without any further ado let's just dive right back into it i will share my screen and wanted to show you guys where we are at now so in our first part we finished aws cloud 101 we just finished aws basic concepts and now we're starting a whole new category called introduction to im now if you miss any of these so maybe you're jumping on the stream late let me just drop my youtube link here shameless self-promotion there, I think that's the right link. Let's see if that works. Yeah, okay, cool. That did work. So I just dropped my link in the Twitch chat. Yo, if you haven't subscribed to me on YouTube, please do. That's one thing I ask. You don't need to pay anything. I actually don't even have monetization on my YouTube channel because I hate ads. So I don't make money from any of this. So if you can subscribe, I would appreciate it. All right, let's dive back into introduction to IAM, understanding the parts of the identity and access management service to set a good foundation for attacking and defending the service, which of course... This is really going to be key as we work our way through this. So a little more theory, but guys, this theory is super important for us to understand and to kind of build that muscle memory. The importance of IAM. Understanding IAM, AWS's Identity and Access Management Service, is critical to attacking or defending AWS account. IAM is a highly complex service with multiple parts, and this module will learn about principles, the people, applications, and AWS services that can act on your AWS account, policies, the definition of what a principal can do in your account, credentials, the numerous ways a principal can authenticate to the AWS control plane, least privilege, how to create a policy with minimally scope permissions, and how AWS makes that, a, makes that difficult for a developer. Why is IAM so important? Well, with traditional network-centric security, you're dealing with two dimensions. You are either inside the firewall or outside the firewall. With public clouds like AWS, the network is software-defined. I issue API calls to AWS to control the network. All these API calls introduce a third dimension, 3D. Suddenly, you're no longer defending castles from opposing armies. You're defending castles from dragons or Paku. I am is how AWS manages access to the APIs that control your network and all other resources that exist in your account. With the right I am permissions, I can, man I can change your firewalls, update routing tables of your network, and exfiltrate data from your NoSQL databases or object storage. AWS even has several system management tools that effective efficiently allow you to pop shells on a machine. As a defender, you need to understand how to defend your cloud accounts and resources against attacks that leverage IAM as an attacker. So we are. You can leverage AWS IAM in a number of ways to compromise a target, move laterally, and exfiltrate data. I understand it's important, and I'm ready to move on. Complete. Introduction to AWS IAM. One of the core principles of identity and access control in AWS is the concept of an AWS account. Amazon treats each account as an independent customer of AWS, and each account is its own independent trust boundary. Inside an AWS account, there can be multiple IAM users, groups, and roles. Terminology can be confusing. Too much talking. Ah, terminology can be confusing and people often refer to granting access as giving someone an IAM account. For clarity, we should always refer to the AWS account as an account and an IAM user inside that account as an IAM user. Every AWS account has a root user and AWS considers that root user the customer. Major customer service interactions need to occur from that root user, including building changes and closing the account. The root user is all powerful and has complete control over all resources in the account except for AWS organizational service control policies, which we will discuss in a future room. Since the root user is all powerful, and since there's only one, best practice is to create individual IAM users for each person who needs access to the account and only grant the level of access required for their job function. When creating an account for the first time, the common practice is for the root user to create an admin IAM user and never use root again. At this point, day-to-day -day access should occur via either IAM users or IAM roles. IAM users combine authentication, identity, and authorization into a single unit. IAM roles typically delegate the authentication and identity to another system and primarily manage authorization. We will discuss users and roles in the next room. Sounds good. Both IAM users and IAM roles require IAM policies to be able to do anything. By default, all API requests are implicitly denied. 
We will discuss policies and how they work in a future room. For introductory purposes, the user or role is the who can do something, and the policy defines the what they can do. I am policies define the actions that the user or role can perform on a resource. Almost everything you create in AWS is a resource, and almost all resources can be identified by their Amazon resource name or ARN. AWS defines an ARN as Amazon resource names uniquely identify AWS resources. We require an ARN when you need to specify a resource unambiguously across all of AWS, such as IAM policies, Amazon Relational Database Service, Amazon RDS tags, and API calls. An ARN consists of the AWS region, AWS account ID, service, and some identifiers for the resource, commonly the resource's name. ARNs are unique across all of AWS. For example, this is the ARN for an EC2 instance and an IAM role. So we see EC2, count, instance, and then we have the instance ID. And then there's our admin role. Trivia. ARN, ARNs almost always begin with ARN AWS. The second field is called the partition. Most AWS customers are in the AWS partition, but there are several other partitions, including GovCloud, AWS China region, and a handful of other top secret partitions built for the US government. For instance, Chinese law requires AWS China to operate in partnership with Chinese companies and not solely by Amazon. AWS requires the use of an access key and a secret key and an optional session token to authenticate calls to the AWS APIs. These keys sign the request and identify which user or role and which AWS account the request came from. We will discuss credentials in more detail in a later room. Multiple AWS accounts can be members of an AWS organization. This is typically done for management and consolidated billing purposes. Typically, there is no implicit trust across accounts in an organization. However, AWS has introduced some new features that blew the, blur the boundary and allow the organization management account to modify and manage the member accounts. And then we have a diagram just kind of explaining that. All right, complete this move room and move on to IAM principles. All right, there we go. We are not going to take a five minute break, but just for the sake of YouTube, I'm going to stop recording and start recording again. So for those of you watching on YouTube, I know this is a short video. Jump to the next one and keep learning with me.